Hello whittlers and woodcarvers and thanks for joining me here again at the joy of carving. I'm recording this video in my new hobby shed at our new house and it's still under construction both the shed and the house so it's a little bit bare in here at the moment but I will eventually fill it with my whittlings and my carving. In this video I want to take you through 10 mistakes that I think beginners make when they start their whittling and their wood carving journeys. And I will be doing full videos on some of these points in the future just because I think they require a little bit more of an explanation. But for now, I'm just going to touch lightly on all of these points. So the first mistake the beginners make is not roughing out their work. Roughing out just essentially means sawing away pieces of the wood before you even pick up your carving tools. And a lot of beginners will make the mistake of taking a square block of wood like this and then just start from this trying to carve out the shape that they need instead of roughing it out. And you can save a whole ton of time if you rough out the work first. But for example, if I was just going to draw a bird on this, if this is what I was going to carve, just give me a rough bird shape there, the wing. Now a lot of beginners will make the mistake of picking up the carving knife straight away and trying to carve that shape out, but you can actually save loads of time if you saw away most of this wood first, which seems, it seems like something really simple to more advanced carvers, but I've seen many, many beginners start from a square piece of wood like this instead of sawing it out. And you don't need a band saw or a scroll saw, you could literally just get an everyday hacksaw just to saw away these corners, for example, so that you start off with more of a rough shape of the piece that you want to whittle. The second mistake is not learning how to sharpen and maintain your tools, and it's really, really important Carving with a blunt blade is really, really dangerous because it requires so much more force to push through that wood than it does with a sharp tool. And it's a really important step that beginners need to learn. It's not the most exciting, I know, but it's crucial. It's often neglected by beginner whittlers and carvers. Learn how to sharpen and maintain your tools. There's a whole video on the channel on how to sharpen and correct mistakes on whittling knives. So go check that out if you don't know how to sharpen your tools. Number three is not understanding the flow of wood or how the wood actually carves. I will be doing a full video on this in the near future because it's quite a broad subject, but not understanding how wood grows, the direction of the grain pattern, etc., will really limit what wood that you can carve. But more importantly, you'll understand what angles that you can carve and how far you can push the wood and things which will make you a more adept carver just by having an understanding of how the wood grows. The fourth mistake that beginners make is only ever carving the same wood all of the time. A lot of whittlers and wood carvers will only ever carve lime wood, or we call it base wood here in the UK. And it's a fantastic wood to carve because it has little to no grain pattern, which means it will take to detail very, very well. And on top of that, it's also a soft wood, so it's easy to carve. But if you limit yourself just to carving base wood or lime wood, you're first of all always going to have to source that wood, so you're always going to have to buy it. But on top of that, I've always loved the idea of being able to just walk in a forest and collect wood, or take a walk along the beach and collect driftwood, and be able to carve that wood. And you're only going to be able to do that if you push yourself to carve a whole variety of woods, rather than just limiting yourself to carving the same thing over and over again. And that leads me into mistake number five, which is carving the same subject over and over again. And a lot of carvers can be really guilty of this. They choose one thing and that's all they'll ever carve. You know, whether it's spoons or gnomes or Santa Claus faces, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. If that's what you're happy to carve, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it, as long as you're happy carving it. But You'll only grow as a carver if you really challenge yourself. So you're only going to improve if you carve a whole variety of subjects. That's how you'll grow and learn and become a more adept carver. And also it just keeps it more interesting for yourself as well. If you're carving the same thing over and over again, it will get boring. So really challenge yourself and push yourself to carve a whole variety of subjects. The sixth mistake is removing too much material at once. and even I'm guilty of this every now and again, you know, even now, and I've been carving for many, many years. It can be really tempting to want to remove a lot of material at once so the carving progresses faster. Um, but you end, always end up taking away too much. And it's also dangerous trying to remove a huge chunk at once as well. 
it should only ever be a small amount at a time which gives you enough time to stop and sort of look and analyze um, to check the pro progress of your carving number seven is using way too much force and it's potentially really really dangerous mistake that beginners can make and it's tied into mistake number two not sharpening and maintaining your tools and number six trying to remove too much material at once the force required to carve should always be minimal and it should never be a whole arm movement you should never be really forcing your arm into the actual carving it's only ever really a squeeze of your hand so my favorite technique i always call the potato peel and it's just a really small squeeze it's a tiny increment at a time and all i'm really doing is that that's the motion or if you're carving in reverse you're carving away from yourself it's only ever the force on the back of the blade so it's a tiny twist and the push of the thumb so never use too much force it's the quickest way to injure yourself Number eight is not planning your carvings. So what I mean by that is if I'm carving something new for the first time, I've never carved it, or I think it's going to be quite complex, I'll do a whole bunch of sketches and drawings to actually really give me an understanding and an idea of how that carving is going to look. And you don't need to be a Da Vinci level artist in order to do that. It's just really rough sketches. If it's really complex, I'll even do a clay maquette. So I'll actually make it out of clay before I even start carving so that I've got an idea of what it's going to look like in 3D. Because it's really challenging to look at a picture or have an image in your mind of a carving and then translate that into something that's three-dimensional. It's really difficult. So always, if you're carving something new, just do a whole series of sketches or sculptures, clay sculptures, or try and get you know, a model of what it is that you're carving so that you have a greater understanding of how it's going to look in 3D. Number nine is comparing your work to another. So beginners do have the habit of doing this. They'll kind of get sort of um, demoralized a little bit because their carving is into the standard that someone, of someone who's been carving for many, many years. But you should always, always be proud of what you've done. Wood carving and whittling is such an incredibly difficult thing to master. You're taking an inanimate, an, an inanimate, ugh, an inanimate object a block of wood and you're turning it into a three-dimensional shape something you envisioned something that you thought of in your head is now this shape from this block of wood and that's an incredibly it's a massive achievement in itself to be able to do that so always be proud of what you've created and never worry about what someone else's work looks like always be proud and always give yourself a pat on the back for what you've carved and what you've whittled the tenth mistake that beginners make is letting cuts put them off the hobby. So I don't know how well you can see my hands on camera, but they are absolutely covered in tiny little scars and cuts that I've just had and developed from 20 years of wood carving. Um, it just happens. It's one of those things that it's not nice, but it does it does happen. Thankfully, I've never I've never cut myself you know, bad enough to warrant going to the hospital, touch wood, that's not going to happen. Um, but it's one of those things that can easily put off a beginner, if they, especially if you have a nasty cut. But every single one of these cuts and these scrapes could have been avoided because I've been carving at an angle that was sort of awkward or I knew my knife needed sharpening and I was using too much force. And every single time I've thought to myself, if I carry on, I'm probably going to slip and cut myself and invariably you slip and cut yourself it's been a long time since i've actually cut myself just because my control now is so much better than it was 15 years ago i can't actually remember the last time i've cut myself properly and um, you know quite often i'll nick myself without even realizing that because it's so small and i'm just carving at an awkward angle and i happen to catch it's always this hand it's always the left hand that i end up catching but never let it put you off we can we need to be as safe as possible while carving i always have a first aid kit handy so there's always plasters and bandages and things and as a beginner i always recommend that you use gloves use protection carving gloves and thumb sheaths and finger sheaths and all those kind of things so we will need to be as safe as possible but don't let it put you off the hobby because it's such a fantastic whittling and wood carving is such a rewarding hobby to have so don't let cuts put you off I will be doing a full video 
in the future on safety tips and how you can avoid cutting yourself and how to be as safe as possible while whittling and carving. So watch out for that video in the future. And there's my 10 mistakes that I think beginners make. And there's a whole bunch of other errors and mistakes that I covered, could have covered, but there's some really good videos out there on YouTube that cover those specifically with things like techniques and how to carve. And I will do videos like that in the future, but these mistakes in particular, I don't think anyone's covered in their videos. And I think they're really important. So I hope you found that video useful and you enjoyed it. If you've got any questions, make a comment. I do try and answer them all, but please like and subscribe. But above all else, happy carvings, everyone.